In this video, we're going to go over how to use GeoGebra to look at Thales theorem. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, create a line segment here between two points. So let me just create a segment right here, right, A to B. And what I'm going to be using is an interesting tool here, which allows me to create a semicircle through two points. And what's interesting about this tool is it really matters uh, in which order I click my points. So if I click A, right, and then B, notice it forms the arc down here below the points. But if I reverse that, what will happen? Well, I form an arc above those two points. In this case, it doesn't really matter. But, and if you wanted to control that, you could. So what we want to do now is create a point that's on this arc. So I go over here to my point tool, and create a new point and I hover over the arc until it highlights there and then I click on it. Now I have point C on that arc but to make sure it's on the arc I go over here select the move tool and just move the point and here I can see that it actually does move along that arc when I move it. That means the point is on the arc. Now what I want to do right, is create a polygon. So I go over here and I'm going to create a triangle A, B, and C, and then I close it. Right, and now I have this triangle. What's interesting here, let me zoom in, which I probably should have done before, lose the center, is that now we can observe something that was observed, you know, over a thousand years ago, over two thousand years ago. That if I measure this angle, right, let's click A, C, and B which is the exterior angle, which is 270. So let me reverse that. Right? It doesn't matter in the order that we click our points. It'll either give us the exterior or interior angle. So I'll click it in this order, B, C, then A. Notice it says that angle is 90 degrees. So when students are playing with this, they can inquire, was that just luck that you happened to form a right triangle? Well, now when you move point C and you drag along the arc, right? The goal is to realize that no matter where you drag this point, you always get a 90 degree triangle, which is an illustration of Thales' theorem. Now you could, I guess, take this from another approach. You could do the same investigation but with an actual circle. So what I would do then if I, right, if I formed line segment AB, I'd want to form a circle, right, around that segment. So I might actually, again, the goal is, I'm sorry, to form a diameter AB. So what do I do? How do I how do I establish that? Well, what what I might do here is again start with a segment, this time D, right to E, and if we have a circle with a center where DE is our diameter, we need the midpoint. So up here in our tools, we do have that ability to get a midpoint, right? If you scroll through your tools, you'll find it here, midpoint or center. Click on your line, it gives you that midpoint F. And then what you can do is, right, draw a circle with center F and extend it to points D or E. Now you have a circle and its diameter. So now what I would do is follow the steps that we just used. I'm going to create a point, right, on the arc. In this case, it's point G. Just like before, I'm going to check that as I move G, it actually follows along, right, the arc that I mean it to be on. And because it does here, right, we know we put the, the point G on this circle. Now when you create your polygon, right, in this case it's polygon E, D, G, a triangle here, and I close it. I can measure the angles, and in this case I'm going to look at both the exterior, which is 270, and the interior, which has to then be 90. If you think about why that is, of course, it has to do with the fact that this full rotation of degrees should always be 360. So if this inner angle is 90, it does make sense that the outer angle is 270. Right? 270 and 90 is 360. But the cool thing here is that you can have students explore this notion, or you can explore it yourself by dragging this point around the full circle. Right? You can see there, there how the angle is switched, but no matter where we have our triangle, right? If we have a triangle with one of the legs as a diameter, that 
is that means of course that you have a right triangle and here we're not really proving anything we can go further and draw other segments right we can draw a segment from F to here and then there are ways to measure the distances of these lines to help students connect and realize that we have the radii of a circle which forms these two isosceles triangles and you can prove Thales theorem right so which of course you can do if you just scroll through these you'll see that of course there is a tool for measuring and it's under here with our angles to look at the distance of a line here so again you can you can play with these lines and their distances so to find the distance of let's say um, D F you can click F to D it tells you how long F D is in this case in centimeters and then F E you realize what is also the same length. You can have them play with these other points here, right? And they'll they'll start to make these connections just by playing with the simple construction, which is really great. You can see all these relationships, and if a label's in the way, you don't want it there, just drag it around, right? Um, I think there's a lot of flexibility built into this construction. All right, thanks.